Welcome, everyone. Okay, so welcome to the um, Future Crazy Media Academy, virtual campus of the Future Crazy Media Academy. We're having this in honor of the African Youth Month, and we think it's crazy to for change. We're starting the um, first session now, which is um, whose topic is youth creativity and nation building. We apologize for the delay in the beginning. I'm Ayoyemi, and this is Chilke. And um, we have an awesome panelist with us. First, I'd like to introduce Professor Abigail Ogwe Dilinsika. She's the immediate past head of department at the um, head of department of mass communication at the University of Lagos. You're welcome, Mark. Thank and you for having me. Yes, no, thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you with us. And Jared Zeman, the Chief Executive Officer of BMLY and R South Africa. And for our rest of the um, creative director at the MLY Okay, Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Very quickly, we'll just jump um, straight into it, seeing as we've um, lost quite some time. And you know, we'd like to start by just Jared Thingman, the chief executive officer. We'd like to say, start by asking, um, you know, I'd like to hear from Jared on this. What would you, how would you define nation building? How would you, how would you like us to understand nation building? Um, hi, thanks for the invite to be here today. Um, uh, it's, um, it's definitely um, the least logistically challenging way to attend a conference in Lagos. Um, so, um, yeah, look, I think it, it's actually a complicated question, really, I think, nowadays, because because nation building can sound like nationalism, which I think is at the root of a lot of global problems right now, as we see the resurgence of the right wing. You know, if you look at someone like Trump, you could look at him as a, as a nation building character, like someone who's been all about building America and, and making America strong. But actually the world we live in, and I mean, this, this conference call is a perfect example, is actually not about nations as much as it is about interconnection of nations, as it is about continents and peoples spread across the earth. So I think, I think the answer is for me, um, nation building in a positive sense is about finding our pride and our, um, and our strength as people in countries who have been regarded as um, not as sophisticated or not as, as worthy as some of the countries in the, in the north of the world. I think for me, nation building is about pride, it's about identity and culture, um, and it's about finding reasons to celebrate coming from a place like Africa, um, rather than feeling, um, you know, that we're somehow afflicted or coming from a, a place with less opportunity. So, so that's, I guess, my answer. But I think I, I would hope that nation building isn't about closing our borders and, and being xenophobic towards others. Well, you certainly brought it right home with that answer. Professor Abigail, do you have a um, do you have a, another contribution to that? Uh, thank you very much. I, I think I'll just submit that it's about construction of a national identity. And um, for our purpose, we should be looking at it in terms of using creative power to promote unity, to ask for good governance, um, to push for socioeconomic development, and it's about getting focused as a country and liberating ourselves um, towards um, social justice and enhancing development. So um, it also has to do with about preservation of our culture. Um, it has to do with our economic development. It has to do with good governance. And so basically, it's how to move a nation forward. It's the reconstruction of our nationality, you know, um, to improve human development index. Thank you, Jared. Um, I think I'll leave it at that for now. I think we might have lost connection to our hosts. 
Go. Yes. Bahana, Bahana, I, su- I suggest you go ahead. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of agree with. Uh, sorry. Uh, I kind of agree with what Jared said. Uh, nation building actually is about pride. It's about unification. Again, what, uh, what uh, Abigail said as well. But we have to be careful because uh, it depends on whose point of view you look at it from. So if you look at it from a Trump point of view, supremacist point of view, then you get a different kind of nation building and a different focus towards nation building from everybody else. So we just have to be careful as a, as a whole on what we mean by nation building generally or which direction we want it to take. That's where uh, the youth actually come really, really into play because we get now get the chance to correct whatever might have been wrong in the past. So depending on perspective, it's more like, okay, the creative industry can either make or mark nation building. I think it's not just creative industry, it's everyone. If uh, it, It's your point of view on, to, on, on, on what you feel your nation should be. So as Jared said, if... Should we close borders or should we open them up? Should we should we be more uh, open to no matter which color of skin you are, or should we be aligned towards any one particular type? As what dictates nation building as well? Yeah. So um, you've um, spoken about um, the perspective in nation building, and you know I think this just leads directly to talking about uh, what's pertinent in Africa right now, which I'm sure our audience will want to hear about. And uh, speaking of our audience, we just like to you know there will be a short um, question session after this. So if you have any questions, just if you're on our Zoom session, put in your questions in the chat box. And if you're joining us via the website, you can send um, a message to us on WhatsApp. And so I'd like to ask, you know, um, the last couple of months have been quite a, a, a kind of whirlwind for Africa. In fact, we so on social media hashtags like. Um, and does shut all down, Congolese building, things that Zimbabwean lives matter, and the youth have made use of social media to speak up in a way they believe will contribute to nation building. So I'd like to ask uh, Farhan in particular, you know, what what your what's your perception of this? And do you think there's a future in nation building in this way? I think it's it's uh, any kind of uh activities happening around the SARS or around around uh, Black Lives Matter or things like that, it's wonderful. Uh, it's actually getting the conversation started. It's getting people to, to come up as a collective and getting people to, to join in. My only fear is that some t- America, where they've actually been consistent about it, uh, about Black Lives Matter, with us, we tend to be very, very seasonal. It's like we make a lot of noise and then we die down. Uh, I think it just needs a bit of persistence towards it that let's just do this and make sure that it happens. And someone, we we certainly do need champions, which we are, which we kind of lack. So yeah, overall, I think it's a brilliant thing what's happening. Uh, it's showing the power of social media. It's showing the power of people coming together. You don't have to be in Nigeria to support uh, a, a Nigerian cause anymore. You could be anywhere in Africa, and if you identify it, with, you, you can share your views on it. So yeah, that that would be me. Yeah, so t- taking from taking from what you just said and what she also mentioned, we can see that um, the youths are majorly the users of um, these social media platforms. And just like you said, it would be totally irrelevant if we keep making noise and then there's nothing to back it up. I mean, we can't just use the hashtags throughout and then our attitudes or our characters are not portraying nation building or like moving forward. So if I could ask you, Professor Abigail, what do you think should be certain traits that youth should possess in order to harness their creativity for nation building? As someone who has been in the educational sector for a while, what do you think are some of the characteristics and traits that youths of this generation across Africa, across the globe, should have in order to ensure that they can contribute to nation building? Well, thank you. I, I think that... Um like the uh, fans said, it's it's a brilliant idea that youths are now taking their 
um, place of pride and um, the office of the citizens is now active, particularly the youth. For a very long time, we have taken it. There's one concept they said, um, manage it like that, something like that. You know, I was just reading one article. That means whether the services are not good, you know, this is not ideal, but you just have to take it. And so they have realized that they have to take their destiny in their own hands and they've tried to mobilize. And they've, they, you see, they, they brought passion into play. And there is that thing called unity amongst the youth. I saw it particularly with the EDSAS campaign. You know, um, it, it's like they've decided that, you know, we all have to come together. So for you to do that, you must, there's what we call in development, you must be dissatisfied. You know, if you are, if you are content with where you are in terms of development, you will not call for any change. So the youths have come to realize that they don't have any other place to call their own than they their own country and that it's it's not about the government it's not about those in power there's somehow you have a role to play you can no longer be a passive audience they have realized that fact that they cannot be passive they have brought passion into it they've also brought professionalism it, you know what does it tell me the answers thing what does it tell me that our investment into our youths are not wasted at all you saw that when they started that campaign, the youths came together in one voice. They are digital natives. That's the aspect of creativity. They also have to be creative. They knew that, you know, at, at, at other times when they gather, they would disperse them. And when they have leaders, they're able to pin somebody down and, you know, uh, get that person off and, you know, that ends this uh, story. But now they've decided, they've gone to re-strategize. You should know that we have had so many hashtags, uh, revolution now, Occupy Nigeria movement, and this watershed that is, um, um, is uh, NSAS movement. And, you know, they've had their lessons, they've learned their lessons. So they became more creative in dealing with those issues. They brought passion, they brought professionalism. You saw in that thing, they had their medics, they had the people who were cleaning, they had the caterers, and they had all sorts of things. So you see the passion that they brought to it, they brought in, and you see in terms of, in terms of looking at their um, characteristics or their qualification, there is, you don't have a yes and no answer to it. Some are born activists, Others as well in their own right, some of them in their own right um, are not actually um, very outward going, but there's what we call bandwagon effect. But they were focused, they were determined, their determination must be there. And you know, they are quite intelligent, intelligence is part of it. And they have personality, they have motivation. And there's what is called enabling environment. The environment of dissatisfaction actually push them to the fore. And so these are traits. And when you look at it, there's innovativeness in it. They were also quite very imaginative because they did things in an unconventional way. Even their funding, they were able to raise funds. They were able to raise funds. And so you can see their creativity. They are, they are quite imaginative. They were innovative. There was passion. And they are not, they are not roadside people. They are professionals. You saw how they came out with their demands, meaning that they've also had strategy meetings before coming out. And so um, some of them will learn along the line. Some are born activists, you know, for um, nation building, some through association. So as you, as you move on, you find out that and they were quite interactive. They went to look for interactive platform. They were also open to feedback. So you see that things are changing. They are using creativity to drive processes. What people in the past will just go onto a particular site and begin to send messages, they have deployed the new media, you know, which is their strength. They've deployed the new media. So they must also be tech savvy, so to say. So um, those are some of the characteristics I could list from, you know, my observation, my review, you know, of the various youth movement in terms of nation building and, um, improved governance. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mario. You know, you've given us quite um, a number of traits to think about. You mentioned you know, power, you mentioned you know, persistence, you mentioned passion, you mentioned dissatisfaction, you mentioned 
intelligent and really good. And you know, there was one in particular that you mentioned that was quite striking. And you mentioned about collaboration, how coming together helps them to handle their creativity. And I'd just like to ask Jared, um, can you give an example? We'd like to hear from you an example of a time where creative collaboration, where you've seen creative collaboration um, bring about positive change in an environment. So I have to just say that it's 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 quite a unusual experience to hear so much optimism on one call. And I, that's I think what I love about about Africa is we actually are optimists. We have every reason not to be optimists, but we manage to be optimists. And so I have to rein in my cynicism uh, when I have this conversation because I don't have. I suppose I, I'm a little bit more skeptical about. Um, how how impactful a hashtag or a movement like this can be. And I think if you look at something like the Arab Spring, you know, which was heralded very much in the same terms, and I will answer your question now, but I just want to make this one comment. I just think that um, the, problem, the problem we have, I think, around social movements right now is, is we are, these things tend to be very fleeting. So Farhan mentioned it a little while ago. I think we have to be so careful to not treat these as trendy things to get in, involved in, and they pass within a week or two, um, and you're back where you started. Social movement change is a very long-term process. If you look at the civil rights movement in the US or the anti-apartheid movements in South Africa, it was decades of fighting before real change could happen. And I think um, it's the impatience that young people have today is part of their spirit and energy but it actually does work against them because the people with long-term plans, which tend to be more conservative, more um, right-wing, they're very patient. You know, they, they have a lot of patience. Look at the U.S. right now. They've spent decades building their Supreme Court up to be a right-wing institution. It's taken them a very long time to get there, but they've just been patient. And, and I think we have, to, we have to be able to bring that into our movements as well as we've got to be patient and we've got to understand that change, some change can be instant, but a lot of change takes time. I think around collaboration, what I'll say is, you know, I think that the, the internet and digital, digital technology has given us the ability to collaborate in a way that is entirely new to our species. There's never been something like this before. We've never been able to mobilize across the world. We've never been able to draw in support from, you know, seven continents to a single cause. So I think actually digital technology as a whole, if you look at a, a product which I'm personally the most interested in, in in Africa, which is WhatsApp. WhatsApp has become an almost universal technology on our continent. Um, it's the biggest music distribution platform in, in Africa. It's the biggest video distribution platform in Africa. It's completely encrypted. So none of our, you know, none of the bad government actors on the continent are able to uh, to snoop and, and, and look at our communications. And I think, you know, in perhaps, and it's hard to say this, but perhaps in years to come, we'll look back on WhatsApp as the most important tool that we have for change because public forums like Twitter and Facebook, the problem with that stuff is it's easy to identify um, people. And so it's a risky thing to do, but actually a lot of the mobilization that I'm seeing happening is happening in what we're calling the dark, you know, in, in sort of the, um, uh, you know, in, in sort of the darker part of the internet where things are not accessible. So I think WhatsApp is a fascinating um, example of cross-country collaboration that has had a huge impact on our societies. I hope that answered the question. Yes, yes, actually, point it gives us it gives us a few pointers to what collaboration is about. So just, just to draw us back a bit, the title of, um, or rather the theme of this year's um, um, virtual campus is Creativity for Change. Now, there's this, there's this notion about the word creativity. Now, every time we go into the media industry, the advertising industry, or the creative industry at large, most people feel like the word creativity is only used when it comes to telling stories, putting up adverts, putting up videos, content creation. But then certain books, for instance, I've, I've read this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. It tells us that creativity is cut across every form of industry. The word creativity simply means when you can solve a solution or once you can solve a problem. If you can find a way to do something different from the way 
every other person has been doing it. That is creativity. So how can we tell the youths watching this program, everybody seeing this live stream, how can you tell them that be creative in your own way to solving this next problem? Now, we're not just talking about the problem of ending SARS. We're not just talking about the problem of how to build a better Nigeria. We're not just talking about the problem of looking at whether the society is gender, queer, religion, cutting across all forms of religious bias. How can a single youth be creative enough to solve the everyday problem? Farah, please. You're on me, it's fine. Sorry, happens a lot. <laughs> so uh, for me, creativity is not just about uh, solving problems. I think sometimes it's more important that creativity just tells a story that people can then latch onto. So whether you're a musician, whether you're a, even if you're a tech entrepreneur, you should be able to just tell that story from your point of view and then allow people to latch on, uh, latch onto that. And I think it needs a bit of consistency over time. Yeah, you can't just do one thing today and then change your story tomorrow. And I think that's where I have found the biggest problem with youth is uh, if I'm a singer or if I'm, a, if I'm a musician, today I'll be talking about this, tomorrow I'll be talking about that. And we don't really have an overarching uh, uh, say where if I stand up and say, I, Farhan Mirza, I solve this kind of problems. That's my story. That's my point of view on life. And it needs that kind of consistency. And if you look at musicians coming even from outside, he, the legend of Bob Marley, Bob Marley just didn't sing for the sake of singing. He, he had a point of view. He wanted life to get better. He wanted, uh, he wanted certain sort of optimism coming out in people's lives. It was beyond his behavior and beyond what he sang about. So I think that's something that the youth need to embrace, that it's not about a hit and miss. You have to consistently, consistently stay true to that message you want to send to the world, that one problem to help solve. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, one particular question I, I want to ask at this time is considering that we've learned to be straight and how that consistency is very important. But for, you know, one person sitting in front of one group, one person sitting in front of Africa asking, where do I begin, right? I want uh, my creativity to be able to make positive change. So, you know, just like Jared answered the question, where is a starting point, where is a beginning point for anyone who wants to um, begin, who wants to start with mm. the I mean, that, that's a pretty big question. Um, so I, I think, look, um, change, you know, when, when you're coming from a position of, of weakness, which is where often the change does come from in society, the people who've got strength and power don't want change. They want things to stay the same, actually. So change is often coming from people with less power and less influence. And I think what we've seen and what we know about that is what you need is you need a lot of passion, you need a lot of conviction, you need a lot of persistence. You know, those are the kinds of words that you can apply to someone who's trying to drive change um, from the bottom, essentially. So I think, I think the answer is that, um, you know, creativity is, is really, I mean, of course that's important. It's the flash of inspiration that's going to, um, that's going to give you an insight into what you want to do. But, but it's an old cliche to say that that's 1% of the work. You know, the 99% is perspiration. And I think that, um, you know, I see that all the time, whether it's on an ad campaign or in a social movement. Um, you, of course, you need that flash of inspiration. Otherwise, you've got nothing to race towards. But most of the, most of the time and most of the energy is in, in the hard work to get there. Um, and I think that, um, that the starting point, therefore, is something in your world, something in your society, something in your life that bugs you, that is a problem, that is something that needs to be shifted. Um, when we look at ad campaigns, um, as, as Farhan I'm sure will agree, is you, your starting point is to try to understand what the brand or what the product, what the problem is. You know, where, where is the problem? Where is the thing that we, where's the gap that we can go into and say, we found a unique solution to the problem out there. 
And I think that once, and, and the, the feeling of being part of a campaign where you've spotted a really, you've spotted a, a problem really clearly is amazing. Everyone gets very excited about solving it. It's that energy of going, wow, we've really spotted something here that we can really impact. So I think that's always going to be the starting point. It's always going to be that point of passion where you recognize something that needs to change. You recognize a problem that needs to be solved. And you have that fire that, that burns in you to get out there and do something about it. Um, Professor Abigail, do you have anything to, to say in conjunction with what Karen just mentioned? Well, thank you. I, I think I'll start by looking at um, the first question that was posed on individuals who are creatively making change or intonation building. Um, I like to share the experience of um, a dance academy. A dance academy somewhere in Lagos. Hello, can you hear me? A, a dance academy somewhere in Lagos. You know that um, we have statistics by UNICEF that over 10 million children are out of school. And in trying to solve that problem, there's this lady, um, Sheyi, Sheyi, um, she's a choreographer and a script writer. And she started the Dream um, Catchers Dance Group late in 2014. She was able to bring out street children, you know, taught them dance. And one of the things they do there is that they must also go back to school. And she started to raise funds um, to live with these children. And, you know, in trying to attract funds, it was really a tall order for her, you know. Uh, but she was able to do that at a point now, Ami Campbell posted. She even now had to do a video to publicize her work. And it was when Naomi Campbell took it and posted it, you know, that there was a little um, turnaround. So it's, it's beyond the hashtag movement. There are actually youths who have been using the creative industry. These children are now dancing their way to stardom. They've appeared on big conferences. They've even traveled to go and showcase their skills. And, you know, gradually they're attracting funding. These children are being um, rehabilitated. Um, they're having education, they're having skills, and they're moving. So the, the reality is that there are youths who are focused, who have carved a niche for themselves, who have decided, you know, to use their calling, to use their passion creatively, you know, to change things and to move the nation forward. So together we can achieve, if we all light little candles in different corners, you know, um, generally we're going to see change. And talking about the fact that, um, I can't agree any less with Jared that WhatsApp has been one of the biggest, um, WhatsApp has been one of the biggest uh, distributors of creative industry and it's something we we'll have to latch on. And the reality concerning the fact that um, many of these movements uh, are not sustainable. I, I think that um, one actually, from my own experience in Nigeria, is snowballing into another. You know, when they started the revolution now, uh, Shoure was, was captured. And those people now say, okay, no, we're not going to use an individual again. We have to go through another platform. And that was why one of the reasons they didn't have a leader for this. So they are learning. It's a learning curve. They are key lessons that they've been learning from each of these. And I tell you right now, they have moved on to another platform. You see, they have the Sorosoki. They've moved on to put up to put up an online platform where they can voice their concern. And I was also made to understand last night that we now have hashtag we move, something like that. So they've left the hashtag SARS, which they are tracking to move on. So they are mutating. And I, the, the, with the spirit, and people have encouraged them, many people have talked about um, uh, bad governance. I, I think that they are likely to sustain the temple because now they have agenda. They're encouraging people to go out and get their voters card. So I, I think that um, we should be a little optimistic and encourage them uh, to, to be involved in nation building, not to leave nation building to the geriatrics. That would be my submission for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you very, 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 very much, Professor. So, um, Farhan, what do you think? Um, if we come to you today and we say that as much as uh, creativity can be used for nation building, it can also be used to destroy a nation. Still in the same hands of the youth that we are, that we are all, um, that are really like primary, but we need to get more participation from youth. As much as creativity can be used to build a nation, do you agree that it can also be used to destroy a nation? And also, um, just a follow-up to this, Professor made mention about uh, sustainable 
agendas. So it's not just about starting a hashtag. After you start that hashtag, how can you continue? Even outside the streets of social media, how can you carry on this hashtag? So number one, do you think this same creativity that we try to use to build a nation, can it be used to destroy the nation? And also, how can we effectively make sure that ideas that are brought about creatively can be sustained? I think you have two questions in there. Uh, number one is, uh, can the same creativity that we use to build also be used to destroy it? Uh, definitely, yes, it's possible. It also depends on which point of view talks louder, which point of view we subscribe towards more. Uh, and you can see this happen in other parts where uh, if someone stands against uh, a certain, a certain uh, or certain, so someone stands for a certain cause and people start to latch onto it, it's, it can be either be good or bad. It's, it's, it's how, how well it's pushed, how consistently it's pushed. And it goes back to what Jared said about uh, patience. So sometimes uh, we could be making noise about a certain issue, but there are people who have worked decades and decades and decades to go against that same issue as well. And they've been very patient about it. So yeah, it can be used to build and it can be used to destroy. It's, 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 it's the same with everything in the world. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's for the youth to choose which side they want to be on. I think as, as a collective, uh, the responsibility also falls on us as individuals where we want to see ourselves being placed, as opposed to just going with the flow. So, yeah, so the second question, how do you think we can make more of these ideas for nation building sustainable outside the walls of social media, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter? I think that comes from consistency because the problem with uh, social media, and it's exactly what Jared said earlier, is, is that longevity of, of, of a hashtag. It's, it's, it's not enough for Fahan to just come and put a hashtag on his post or attach a hashtag to what he's doing. It's, he has to go out there and take part in that, in that thing as well. So if I'm, a, if I'm a creative, I should be able to get brands to latch on to that kind of a situation. If I'm a musician, I should be able to talk about it from that point of view as well in my songs. So we have to practice what we like or share on social media as well. Yeah, consistency seems apparently to be the word of the day. Consistency is what, uh, from what I'm hearing from you all, but consistency is what sustains um, change beyond just uh, a hashtag, a hashtag. And uh, one question in particular, I remember at the beginning with Mr. Abigail, also mentioned that nation building can be um, described in terms of creating a national identity, creating a national function. And I'd just like to ask Jared, how do you think creativity, what role do you think creativity can play in um, creating a national consciousness? You know, beyond just trying to solve a problem or trying to um, create awareness about the problem. Now, creating a national identity for people, how can creativity? I mean, I think a lot of a lot of what nations would describe as their identity, I think, are the product of creative pursuits. Um, whether it's the art, I mean, a lot of the a lot of stuff that comes out of the arts, um, for example, you know, music and um, uh, and that kind of stuff. So I think that I think creativity probably is at the heart of a lot of culture. You know, I think that that's where culture is driven from. That's where experiments are made. That's where figures who we come to support and admire emerge from. So I think that that's, you know, and I think that, to be honest, that's why oppressive regimes, you know, one of the places they go to first is, oppress, is to suppress the arts, you know, to suppress um, writers and musicians and, and creative people because they know the power of creativity. You know, that's what they're most afraid of is the power of creativity and the power of, of emotional resonance. Um, so I think that, um, you know, and, and again, I think, you know, Africa is blessed with an incredible number of amazing um, um, individuals and movements and art forms. And I think that's what's kept us going. You know, again, I, I, I grew up in apartheid South Africa and one of the, one of the major factors was, was the arts, you know, was music, was, was, um, was creative pursuits. 
So I think that has a, it has a very central role in that respect. It's not the only thing, but I think that, um, you know, the, the amazing thing about what I'll say about right now in history is that creativity has never been easier to unleash with, 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 a, with a pretty cheap laptop. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's an electronic musician that I'm following um, out of Kenya now um, who has who's achieved kind of world renown and, and literally has produced his albums on a laptop um, somewhere in Nairobi. Uh, doesn't need a massive studio, doesn't need, you know, all the, all the tools and techniques that he needs to learn how to do his craft, he can get online for free. So I think we're at this amazing time where creativity can really be unleashed and it can also be spread. You can get a following in line around the world without really spending any of the effort that it would have taken in the past. So I think it's an amazing opportunity. I think if, 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 um, uh, if, the, the, if the right sort of focus can be brought to the right causes and the right points of view, I think it can have a massive impact. Well, thank you very much for that. So um, in, in summary, um, we've been able to all decide that uh, the power of creativity is um, it, it, it cuts across borders. And then it's something that with consistency, patience, collaboration, uh, a lot of factors are built into the power of creativity. And so we've all been able to decide that, yes, the youth can make a change only if they do not deviate from the part of nation building. We have decided First of all, within themselves that they have a right, they have a duty, they have the privilege to make use of what they have or what they can create to make a change in their community. I am, I am, I am, I am on the same page here. Yeah, so it's, it's basically the case that for every youth that is out there today, whether they are in the advertising sector, whether they are in the music industry, whether they are in the arts, just like you said, because every time we talk about this, this, this creative spirit or something, there's always a bigger focus on the arts part, that music, entertainment, the movie industry. But then we forget that there are certain youth who also want to play politics. There are a lot of them who want to go into politics. There are a lot of them that want to be social activists. There are a lot of them that even want to be social workers. They're not doing it for the money. They just do it because they have passion to serve the people. So, you know, on a final note, I would just want three of you to point out for like one minute, talk to Let's talk to the youth that are watching this program. Let's talk to other professionals like yourself. In a minute, what can you say in summary would be the way forward? Because every time we always say, okay, either we are waiting for the government to come up with job opportunities, or as graduates, we are waiting for the creative industry to offer us jobs, we are looking for internship opportunities, we are looking for mentorship opportunities. What do you people feel is the way forward as professionals, as educators, as People that have been in the industry for quite some time, what do you think is the way forward for youth watching this program now? Um, Professor Abigail, let's start with you, then we'll move on to Jared and then we'll end with Farah. Thank you. I, I still maintain that um, follow your passion. I am a writer. I write. I write very well. And um, it might interest you to know that this is my eighth year on a, an editorial board. Uh, I don't have column, but I, I write creatively to talk to government about development issues. That, that is my passion. That is my strength. That is my platform. I, I just share the experience of the lady with the Dance Academy. Um, they talked about poetry. You know Chukumerije? Chukumerije is a renowned poet that uses his poem and it's like uh, then far said his message has been consistent you know talking about issues of governance about identity so first you must identify your passion and you know follow through it it could be poetry it can be music it can be advertising like you said you know writing copy it can be um using your blogs to talk about things in a creative way that will cause change you don't you don't necessarily need to be on the street but sometimes we have to be on the street that's the truth and you have to remain true to, um, to, 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 to your initiative. I also know those who have written literature, young people, even in the primary schools, they've started writing stories, you know, to change things, the kind of country they want and what a view. So uh, I, I think that um, you may not all be on the hashtag lane, but you can still cause for change. You can end, get into nation building by... Um, by driving narratives, 
either through your creative works, either your write-up, your music, your arts, and what have you. So um, it, it's not just all about revolution, that will go the revolutionary way, but some people are born like that because we have a... Uh, we have our AIOs, we have our attitudes, interests, and opinions on how things should be done. But when we harness them together, I think together we can all achieve. Thank you very much. Yes, and Jared, have enough. That's your final word. Yeah. So first of all, I, I have to say I'm very inspired by Abigail. Like I find her view of the world amazing. I'm feel much. I'm going into my day much happier having heard um, her perspective on things, which is so incredibly. Um, powerful and positive. Um, what, what I would say is this, I would say we need to support each other. I think that's the secret. Um, the problem with social media and, and, and this age is it's a very narcissistic movement. It's all about taking pictures of myself, taking pictures of my holiday, taking pictures of my stuff. Um, telling people about yourself does not make you happy. What makes you happy is to support others, to send positive messages to other people, and I think that's how we build, right? So like that DJ I was talking about or that producer that I was talking about, I sent him a tweet after I heard his album. Um, and I'm not saying that changed his life, but it felt like something I could do, a very small thing I could do to give him encouragement and to, and to kind of fuel him to his next work. And I think that's, we need to be proud of, our, proud of each other on this continent. We need to be proud of the work we do. We need to support each other. And I think that is a very small thing you can do with your social media accounts, with your, um, you know, with your text messages, whatever. Just support, give, each, give encouragement, give each other a boost. Um, and, and I think that will fuel a lot of what goes on from here. Thank you for the invite to be here today. And thank you very much. There was, there was a big affirmation when you said something about uh, not, um, telling people about yourself does not make you happy. So from a Sabi girl, you didn't know that. Yeah, she was a total affirmation of that. So lastly, Farah, um, what can you leave us with? I think uh, most uh, Jared and Abigail have kind of said everything. So I'll, whatever I say would be kind of a repeat. Uh, but I'll say it anyways. I think, uh, number one, uh, be passionate, uh, be persistent, be consistent, and not just in becoming the voice or, or a hashtag or supporting a hashtag, but even in your actions, what you do. So... If there's someone doing it and you can't be a part of it, just show your support that, yeah, you're doing the right thing and I am, I'm, with you, uh, I'm with you in what you're doing. Uh, instead of just concentrating too much on ourselves, like I am Fahan and I'm doing this and I'm Fahan and I'm doing that. It's, it's about what are we as Kenya or what are we as Nigeria, what are we as South Africa doing and be a, be a supporter of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We had a question here. What do you think we were um, your closing stuff, you actually already answered the question. Jesse's asked, do we need connections to showcase our creativity? And you know, you all answer that way you said you start where you are with it. We 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 learned you know so much from this session, how that you don't need an upper hand to come and influence on your life before you start moving on to influence making change wherever you are. Start where you are and be consistent. Consistency is what powers change. And of course, show support for people. Show support for other people that are doing great and prioritize you. Thank you so much. It was uh, quite enlightening to have you on this session. You know, having such a mix of different personalities, different opinions, and giving us a, a, a um, bird eye view of this um, topic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh. Thanks for the invite. Good luck with the rest of your program. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. And goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye.